what you are seeing is some light which is falling in your eyes. Okay. So now where is the mic? Actually the mic is here. It may not be here. You are just uh, having an image in your eye of the mic. But the fact is, and you have some experience, you relate that to that and you make some kind of a picture. And sometimes they turn out to be true. Sometimes they turn out to be true also. Sometimes you know you see some, uh, you see a rope, you take it for a snake. So you, you, the image of snake is there in your mind. Therefore, you took it for a snake. The fact is, therefore, the things are inside and outside. So what you are seeing in this world may not actually exist altogether. It's quite possible. So in fact, experience and reality, the scientists are spinning in confusion for a long time. You know, he was telling there is a difference between showroom science and the real science. Just like when you go to a, buy a, a computer. What do you see? Uh, a computer you're going to purchase. Fine. But there is an R&D lab where they know all the problems this computer has. At the showroom they don't tell you all that. So what we study is actually a showroom science, not the real science. In real science, if you go, they are fundamentally in spinning ever at fundamental areas for I mean, hundreds of years today. Uh, he was giving another example. Suppose somebody writes one, two, three, four. Correct? I write one, two, three, four. Uh, what do you call it? Numbers. I can write in a Roman way also. One, two, three. Now, which one is the number? Actually, none of them is a number. Both of them are only symbols representing a number. And what is a number? Thousand years mathematics is confused about it. To this day, they are not able to conclude what is actually a number. So what we study in a school is called a showroom science, not the real science. You are getting with the point? What is really number? Go. They are studying and figuring out what is actually a number and they are pulling their heads and toes in here. What is actually a number? But what we study are, is the number than anything is all over. But actually the real facts are there. And what he was supposing is that the real science is actually not taught in India because too much you know, there is anxiety for existence here. Nobody gets into it. We just use science. Just like when you are all in 10th, yeah, 12th class, at least there is some kind of you know inquisitiveness. But as you go into any specialization, say engineering or medicine, more of us we are interested in utilizing things than uh, really knowing what is the deeper thing. And some of us felt suffocation also because of that. You know, it's a different kind. There is no urge to know. There is no more urge to utilize. So we utilize science. And, but even if you use science and if you are intelligent, you will understand Krishna Consciousness. And Krishna Consciousness, the Bhagavad Gita is much deeper and it's, it's not showroom religion, it's real religion. There is a difference between now showroom religion and real religion. Like all the showroom religions tell you, uh, God created us. Bhagavad Gita never teaches that. You know, somebody asks this question, why did God create us? Tell him on the face, God never created us. That is not what Bhagavad Gita teaches. How does it so? Very simple. Suppose fire is there, there is heat and light. Correct? Okay? Is it that when fire started, then after two minutes heat came and after three minutes light came? It gets together. So similarly, Bhagavad Gita, what does Krishna say? Mamev Amsha, you are my part and parcel, you never created, we expanded out of God. We are God's energies. Energies are always in the personality. It is not that God came into existence after 11 minutes, He came into existence after 20 minutes, He came into existence. There is nothing like that. So it is not a showroom science or a showroom religion. It is a real religion. Where the real problems are solved actually. If you start questioning, the very reason the science is today dumping uh, the religion is because what they know about is showroom religion, which they can easily tackle. And you know, when many times we have the, I told you that example, some people are there who have taken up the field, creationist, and they are able to stump the science very nicely by saying this fact, 
that when I see information in a DNA from where the information comes, science has no answer for that. Actually, they are clean bold at that point. Not a clean bold, they are completely clean bold. Hit me. No answer actually. Because when you see so much information, because in our, you know, when the Darwin was proposed this problem, because when he proposed that life has come, you know, by the ocean and all this thing, so many even scientists said this is not science. Because there is no proof of it. So he gave a powerful analogy which is called inference by the best explanation. Just like suppose you go on the road and you see no buses are running. Now your previous experiences, there is sometimes strike regularly in Mangalore. Correct? In a year, three, four strike will happen. If there are no buses, we know there is strike today. So you have to conclude something, no? We have to come back home. You cannot just leave it because I do not know what is the answer, so I can't act now. Right? You go over your previous experience and inference by the best explanation is there is a strike today. You call up home and say, looks like there is a strike, you come back home. You have to act on it. So similarly, he said, because we are seeing, you know, when cow is breeded and you know cow becomes bigger, so therefore one species can become another species. This is the inference by the best explanation. If somebody has a better explanation tomorrow, that should be accepted. You got it? But now by using the inference by the best explanation, we can defeat that very easily. Number one is that we have been breeding cows for thousands of years. Cow will remain cow, it has not become a dog. Everybody does breeding. Suppose you have one dog, they want to have a little taller dog, they will mate it with the taller dog. They will not mate it with the small dog. Correct? So if you, everybody does like that and you don't mate the small dogs at all, then what is going to happen? Only big dogs will remain. But dog will not become a horse. And it has not happened. We have been breeding cows from thousands of years, even in the Vedic time, cow breeding is going on. We have been breeding dogs. So the argument fails. Inference by the best explanation. Another problem, same thing, the information in the DNA. We have an ex experience that if any information is seen in any book, suppose so much, we are reading now Bhagavad, so much information is there. You know, Veda Vyasa wrote all the information. Correct. And Srila Prabhupada has explained that more. Okay, done. We'll stop at that now. So now we know information means it has to come from an intelligent person. Now it is not that, that is my experience. Correct? Okay? Isn't that an experience? Is that anybody has an experience that ink was thrown on a paper and an information came into the paper? Does anybody has an experience? You can propose that. We give you credit, but none of us in this world have an experience of that. Correct? So using Darwin itself now, using the tool, it's a powerful tool which he created, inference by the best explanation, we can convince the world that the God existed because the information in the DNA has to come from an intelligent source. And now what happens, if you look at the information within the DNA, the amount of intelligence that is there in it, because it has an intelligence to arrange 100 trillion cells. Amazing intelligence. In fact, you know, and if, they, if you go to, there are not one model he made. There are 84 lakh models he has created. That means 84 lakh programs are existing. Correct? But within a cell, a program is there. Within the, uh, every cell has a program. In the time, the beginning, it is one cell only. And some places it remains one cell like bacteria. One cell, the bacteria is a unique entity. They sometimes exchange DNAs also. Uh, there is a tamasha goes on in that word. They sometimes use it to explain uh, adaptation. It's not true because there is another word. Uh, we will come to that later. But the point is that we are seeing what we are seeing that whenever we see an information, we know there is an intelligent source behind it. Correct? Therefore, you have to have know this. You suppose you are talking to people, you quote Puranas. In the beginning, nobody accepts Purana as an evidence. They accept science as an evidence. So therefore, we have to use scientific preaching in the beginning. The later stage, when people come to accept Puranas, oh, you don't have to quote this, this level at all. But at the same time, you can, because scientists are ruling the world today. If you can convince them and solve their problems, because the genuine scientists are very few in the world. Now you say, how many scientists are there in the world? Now you see any university produces at least 50 PhDs every year, if you call them the scientists or doctors every year, say total, say 500. 
and you, around the world, you say every year they produce few lakh scientists or more, maybe one crore scientists are produced like that, maybe 10,000 universities. So a few crore scientists are produced every year, but actually among them there will be one or two real scientists. Rest are just cut paste, cut paste, that we do. They are not thinking at all. Because why this thing they have not figured out, you know, it's a strange thing. You know. it's, it requires little intelligence to agree to this. It doesn't require, therefore, Krishna ya bhaje se bada, you have intelligence. A dull-headed person will say, yes, he fell, but none of us have an experience like that. So, inference, my best explanation is that when I see so much intelligence inside a cell, I agree there is a source which gives that intelligence. Now, go one, next level. He didn't make one program, 84 lakh programs on it, because each species had a different way it functions. A dog likes to bark, cat doesn't bark, we don't bark. So there is a different program everywhere. A snake goes in one bed. So there are 84 lakh different programs you are having. Now the question comes, who designed this program? A so amazing program. It's amazing. And now, when we make a program, in fact, Bill Gates, when he exists, first time when he saw the program in the cell, he said, first thing you understand the, comp the density of packing of the information and the program. They say, in a teaspoon, if you just keep a teaspoon of honey you take, teaspoon of ghee, teaspoon of sugar, sometimes cooking we use. If you just have a teaspoon of DNA that has the information enough to design all 84 lakh species, so they don't, don't know 84 lakh, science knows only 25 lakh. All, all the lakhs of species plus what is there in all the libraries ever written. One teaspoon can keep that much information. Now in a computer your hard disk, one terabyte, it cannot keep. Now you got this point? Because we have 100 trillion cells, imagine the size of the cell. And within a cell there is an information to create the whole body. Okay? There is a complete information. So now when we see such density of information, we are today excited about nanotechnology because we see within a cell we are keeping small space all the information, but imagine the kind of pro and the kind of intelligence the programming has. And when you are moving your hand like this, all this is because of the programming which is there inside even one cell. True? You got it? From one cell we became so big, that means within that, just like a seed. Within the seed of a tree, all the information is there, how the fruit will be formed, how the leaves will be formed, how we should move toward the sunlight. Sometimes you see one coconut tree is there, one another coconut tree, it moves like this. You have seen? So all that information is there within one cell. Finally, it started from one seed only, you know, from one cell or whichever way. You just imagine the intelligence involved in it. Now all the intelligence that is there to deal and you are studying in a class so many things you are hearing understanding. All that thing that the separate issue, mind is not another. They have no idea about mind. Let us deal only the hardware because the mind is another platform. Science today knows only about five things. Earth, water, fire, air, ether. Even ether they don't understand properly. They have only that much knowledge. That's full stop. They have no knowledge of the mind. Because mind is going experiential learning from millions of lives. You cannot teach a dog Bhagavad Gita. His mind is trapped by strong desires of sense gratification. Even is a soul only, you know there. Teach no. But a mind is trapped by strong desires of sense gratification. He can't understand. Some human beings are also like dogs only. You try to teach Bhagavad Gita, he can understand your language. But one word will not go inside his head because his situation, unfortunately, is so much like it trapped by disasters. Sometimes in temples, people come up for stealing, we have seen. In Bangalore, it is a, there is an Aarti play. Uh, people used to, I used to be in the book counter and I used to see people coming. They are coming to the darshan, he is doing darshan. Below Aarti plate used to, in the beginning, you were very foolish. Aarti plate used to be visible with a lamp on it. So people used to put money, but some people are not taking aarti, but not put money, they will take money. <laughs> we had to put a car to watch and every day we used to catch one person. So that means that fellow, even if he has come to the presence of the Lord, he is like a dog only, he is not able to benefit at all. Rather he is harming himself and going. Correct? When you steal from dogs, aarti play, imagine the reaction comes. So, 
the point is that so mind is another instrument in which undergoes experiential learning life after life when it comes to the human form of life the design is gradual experiential learning when it comes to the human form of life he has a capacity to understand spiritual knowledge therefore the vedas say atad brahma now you should understand spiritual life you can't understand below human species not only the body sir the mind is still they only are so gross they see only body again you talk about mind and brain they are spinning from hundreds of years the point is that if somebody studies bhagavad gita nicely he can actually help the real scientist but he should have understood gita first and number 2 is that they they should hear us also in a proper way like somebody may say i'll come to that little let me finish with this uh, inference by the text explanation now we see lakhs of species science has only counted 25 lakh and they keep counting every day correct they keep counting now what happens it true our definition of uni and their definition of species may not be same because their definition of species is that one species cannot reproduce with another species that is their definition of species cat cannot uh, unite with dog and give birth to a child so cat and dog are different species but our uni may not be same because we have an experience where vishwamitra uh, had a relation with menaka and gave a child shakuntala correct in both a different species menaka is apsara is a different species so we will count it a different uni but they count it as their ex- their is different platform altogether so we they not on our platform so one thing is that it is a different but at the same time we are not limited to the life within earth uh, there was somebody telling me uh, arguing me how uh, no, how do you say uh, the, the veda did uh, talk everything as yes they talk they didn't talk about dinosaur they talk krishna when he went to that uh, nirga he was like a huge lizard in a huge lizard dinosaur the huge lizard talk what is it he talk about oh, there is some dinosaurs of flying huge yes garuda and the so many garuda is just one of the chief among them. there are so many birds which they say fly even from one planet to another planet that you have to see wait you cannot even imagine the scale they are talking huge birds can okay? They say these birds are so big they lift elephants for eating. They say dinosaurs were so huge with wings they were flying. Yes, there were description of birds in the Bhagavata. So which way do you want to go? So you can't say they didn't talk about. But they were not use the same word that you have created dinosaurs. So they have another word for that. So you cannot you know play around with that. So now in he goes. So they say that lakhs of species are there. Now when I was in small experience in Infosys. we didn't create any program now you are also working correct already structure of programs are ready when we had a problem i don't know you have gone into the project state now when you are in the project project stage what we do they don't allow you to make a program from scratch they have no time for that a problem has come they already have a structure of a program what do we do we just adjust the program to suit the new customer now nobody is going to allow you to spend 5 years making from scratch a new program it's a waste of time also already they have a structure ready correct they adjust it for the new customer the similarly a darwin saw when the science is seeing today they see hierarchy of structures hierarchy of structures they see cat they see dog you see the overall structure is similar there is a backbone there is a kidney there is this there is this there is this anywhere you open it is same so they say it proves one is equal to another i say no because i have no experience of that thing but what i have experienced is that the same company because i am engineers the same maruti company makes a small car and it makes a luxury car with the same principles when i see same suppose any part of the world you see a program if you are a software engineer you can say this is from infosys because you know the structure is same if you go inside suppose they provide you the program you see the structure you say oh this main structure is same this is a sign of infosys program because you know overall structure is same in all the programs correct you know these are all coming from infosys true but you do not say that this program became higher program It doesn't have no some in inside a computer some lightning happened some short circuit happened and it became a new operating system windows uh, 7 became windows 8 
it does not happen we have no experience of that we have no experience that maruti 800 become maruti 1000 it happens you have an experience your car is standing outside some lightning fell it became mercedes benz now anybody experience anybody has an experience like that? so similarly how do they say a chimpanzee became man we have no experience of that we have no experience of that and i am now connecting back to what we see i have some uh, experience in me what i see outside actually i do not know what it is may not be it doesn't exist also probably but i relate to because i have panchendriyas they grasp the information correct i see something but i do not know maybe the object doesn't exist but i get some information i have some experience i relate the two things so why not i do that i have an experience when i have a design evidently i agree there is a designer this is as per maximum even the science can speak correct okay? so therefore it is very easy uh, for a person to understand therefore krishna says in bhagavad gita aham sarvasya prabho ho when you understand i am the source of everything what will happen you will surrender to me you will worship me all devotion so we should not avoid uh, even uh, krishnadas kaviraj goswami says when you are trying to understand these words don't avoid using your logic chaitanya daya what is the shloka chamatkara what is the shloka famous shloka होए चमत्कार कर विचार विचार करी वे हुए चमत्कार इसे ए द मर्सी ऑफ लॉर्ड चैतन्य प्लीज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम ऑल एंगल्स विचार विचार मींस यू ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द सिमिलरली व्हेन कृष्ण सेज इन भगवत गीता अहम भी जो प्रजापिता हा ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन व्हाट वे कृष्ण इज ही इज नॉट लाइक अदर रिलीजन से गॉड क्रिएटेड ही डिडंट क्रिएट आत्मा आत्मा इज ऑलवेज एक्जिस्टिंग is one energy of the god correct antaranga shakti is always there all the energies of god are always with god fire came is not a heat came after 5 minutes correct heat was always with fire that the revolution of bhagavad gita now bhagavad gita is therefore what you say as real religion not showroom religion where just like in bhagavad gita there are so, so many things are said which therefore prabhupada gives an example of well in the river now you know well you see there is something benefit you can take one well you can take bath correct another well you can wash clothes but you don't do both in the same well another well you use for drinking water you yeah. know i have that experience Ex- because i went once to my village this is this well you can take bath this well you can drink water nobody takes bath in that well because because well is a stagnant water it gets spoiled so if they are drinking water from some well they will not take bath there it gets spoiled but river because it is flowing water people bath also they drink also do whatever in it because it's flowing water it's not stagnant so in bhagavad gita krishna says a proper rights in the purport gita is like a river other religions are like wells some religion talks about surrender some religion talks about love some religion talks about i am everything is there everything is there it's a flowing river but other is says what is there in any religion is a plus more plus more i told you one now gita never says god created us because we are eternal krishna says in bhagavad gita aja for himself also and for the soul also correct ajo api sam avayatma bhutana vishro api sam krishna says so so krishna says i am eternal and for the soul also in the second chapter krishna says nitya soul is also eternal so in that way a both are eternal so how can both be eternal because we are energy of god we are always existing so deeper science about god and about soul you have to go to the bhagavad gita but then somebody can say that can you prove god now i am just giving you some see i am myself to learning so whatever i understood every week i keep telling so for me also when you tell you understand more now somebody may say your friend you give all these arguments now you know the the friends have to be have capacity to understand first they should be able to think straight and understand if suppose you go to einstein and is a proof e equal to mc square he will write the proof none of us can understand because i have forgotten mathematics but i knew and other people may not are not in the line only correct can you understand the proof 
So to understand a proof, you have to cooperate with the person. No, you can't just stand out the proof. proof. You right. You don't understand one line. You prove. So similarly, you say prove God, I'll prove. But you should be able to understand what is the proof. Say, the doctor said, your infection is there because of bacteria. Okay? This bacteria has given you the infection. And this is the medicine. And you say before that, my question is there. First prove to me that this infection is from a bacteria. So what the doctor will do? He will do some kind of test. They have nowadays some test. You know, the culture and there is some even something. And now the machines have come. They immediately tell you something. Put, 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 it will tell. Or you just take easy nowadays thing, blood sugar. They take some one drop of blood, even a smaller than a drop, they put in some kind of instrument, immediately it gives you a reading. This will do. Now you say, hey, I don't believe this. The first thing is that you have to cooperate with me. I have to convince you what is the proof, how it is working. Correct? So to understand proof also you need intelligence. No. Some knowledge you need of that field. If I say mathematically x square is equal to y square plus z square proof, you prove it. Correct? But to understand the proof, somebody has to learn, know some mathematics. No, you say 5 equal to 2 plus 3. But if I don't know what is mathematics, why will I understand? Proved. You say proved, but the other fellow is uneducated, he can't understand. You got it? See, if suppose somebody is uneducated, he doesn't know what is 5. And when you write 5, he can't read only. So 5 equal to 2 plus 3, you have proven. You have proven. But that fool cannot understand. First he has to know what is 5, how to write 5, correct? So to prove something, you need to cooperate with the person who is trying to prove. If you do not cooperate with us, we can't convince you. So similarly, the so many scientists are coming and shouting, can you prove God? And I feel sad because when I see the creation, they are stuck. Because they do not have the higher information which is there in Bhagavad Gita. Yes, we can prove, but you have to have the intelligence and you have to first intelligence to understand a proof. Second, you have to cooperate with me. I will help you understand my proof. Correct? Suppose some person comes, one child, he doesn't know mathematics only. And you say, he says, what is 2 plus 3? 5. How? Then you say, I have to teach him mathematics. What is number 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 2? Like that. Correct? So he has to cooperate. If he doesn't cooperate, we can't express you. We can't convince you. So we have to have some cooperation. Otherwise, it is not possible. So people, the very reason people say they can't understand God is because they don't cooperate with us. Just like Prabhupada gave a very simple analogy for that. Prabhupada say, you say you want to see God. Number one, you have cataracts now. If you have a cataract, how can you see anything? I have to remove the cataracts, then you can see God. Correct? It's a very simple way to understand the point. If suppose somebody says, show me, but if you have cataract, how can you see? But similarly, if I have spiritual cataract, I can't see God. God is a person. If you don't have proper attitude, you will not be able to understand. Okay? Take another example. I say there is a bottle of water. Okay? Now, I told you that example. Actually, you don't know. It's a bottle of water. You have some experience in your mind. You see some image which comes to your eyes. May not be, it has come from here. Because sometimes in the water when you put a stick, stick looks bent. But actually stick is straight. Because you have experience of a straight stick, you know, you when you take out the stick, you see it is straight. Because you have an experience of bent stick, you assign it with that. But actually it's a straight stick. So actually it's a very uh, deep uh, issue. So the point is, the way you look at it, so how do we come to know? We say some kind of thing called common sense. Because if I, if you say what is there, it's a bottle of water. You are saying uh, it may not exist, but I go near and touch it, it is there. But again, when you touch it, it's perception, another panchendriya. And that gives you a stimulus here, and then assigns you some experience that you have, and then you feel there is a bottle of water. So again, you are in a spin. So you say, okay, the way we use it, because I take it, I put it in my mouth, I can drink water. Take it, chalo. That much we will agree now. Because there is actually they can go still more deeper. So the way you want to use it, it will prove its relevance. Somebody may say it's only a paperweight. And he can use it as a paperweight to prove it's a paperweight. Same way now come to so. If you think 
I am the body, I want to enjoy myself, it will behave like that. But if you think, just like a water bottle, it's a bottle of water or a paperweight, depends on how you use it. A bottle of water is a bottle of water if you drink it. You know it's the way you use it. But somebody says, it's not a bottle of water, it's a paperweight. It will behave like a paperweight for you. Correct? Your paper, you keep over it, it behaves like a paperweight. So, what it is depends on the way I use it. Otherwise, I don't know what it is actually. Correct? My panchayatiriyas may be duping me, my experience will be something else. So, I don't know what it is actually. But the way I use it, so I can understand something about it. So similarly, the soul. If you use it for the things which animal is, animal is, his mind is so, he has still not done enough experiential learning. His mind is so much gripped by sense gratification, he all life runs for eating, sleeping, mating, depending. Only this four thing the animal is doing. If you do like that, it will only give you experience of that. But if you get information from Bhagavad Gita, you are a servant of Krishna. You act like that, it will give you experience of that. Now, understood or not? A bottle of water, the way you use it, it proves its existence. You use it for drinking, you know it's a bottle of water. But if you use it the paperweight, it looks like a paperweight only. You don't know what is inside. When you drink, you know it's water. The soul also in the same way, the way you use it. If you use it for only eating, sleeping, mating, defending, you'll only have an experience of an animal like that's all. There is nothing more. But if you use the information from the Gita, I am a servant of Krishna. Correct? You use it like that, it will prove its existence. So, this is where in the purple proverb they say, people have only this information. We are, he says, servant of the circumstances. Now, this is what we said also implies that we are servant of the circumstances. We don't know what I am seeing, we don't know what I am feeling actually. Even the chair, I think it's a chair, it's only a bundle of atoms. You know that the amount of space within atoms is so much. Actually, it's empty. It is not an atom. The center of the atom, what we call it, nucleus, is very small compared to the space the atom occupies. It's very small. May not be one to the power of thousand or whatever it is. It is very small compared to the space the atom occupies. So actually, I am not. I am thinking I am sitting on a solid object, but actually it is empty most of the places. But I have an experience that I am on a solid object. So if you now go actually deeper, your mind will start spinning like anything. So therefore the scientists say, we can prove one thing, that we can't prove anything. There's the only proof we have, that there is no proof for anything. And they say us, proof. But actually, when they are going to the fundamental area, they are stuck. So even science, a person who knows the Vedas, can help them out of the problems. And those scientists are very less. Most of the scientists are showroom scientists. That's all. They are never inquiring anything about anything. True? There was one example. One man, what he did? He took a skull of a man and he took a jaw of an ape and combined it together. Because if one species has become another species, even according to Darwin, there should be something called transitional forms. Because suddenly, Windows 7 cannot become Windows 8. Suddenly, monkey cannot become you. Because you and monkey, there are thousands of differences, correct? His body has so many hair, his face is in a different way, his hands are different. And there are thousands of differences. Suddenly, monkey cannot become man. And because it has happened by accident, according to so-called Darwin, so there should be uh, so many changes in between. Because accidentally, they have to happen one after another. These are called transitional form. They are not called stable species. Just like they say, you know how snake was formed? Did I tell last time? You know how snake is formed? They say man, uh, some animals try to go inside the Registan. So outside the Registan, hands and legs were very nice. When you try to go inside, they become a disturbance. So he lost the hands and legs. Prabhupada says, we should be ashamed to speak such things. Even a gentleman will not speak such things because he has some shame. <laughs> you know, imagine how proper. You read the book, Life Comes From Life. He really gives them tight, tight slaps. And he wanted all scientists to read that book. 
<laughs> he gives them a real tight slap. No, Professor Gentleman should be ashamed to speak such thing. Now, suppose somebody has to fly. There are two, two explanations they have given of flight starter. What are the two experiences? Two explanations. One explanation, a, a squirrel was on the tree. So he saw a flying insect. So the insect is flying. If I can catch it, it jumped and it got wings. That is one explanation. A gentleman should be ashamed to speak such things. Correct? That is called, if somebody is giving such kind of explanation, you know what we should say in real English? Please don't insult my intelligence. If I have to accept this argument of yours, that will be insult to my intelligence. Correct? What are you thinking? I am madman to believe this. The another one they have is that some animals are trying to catch flies. Just like we catch sometimes mosquitoes. And slowly the hands became wings. These are two they have, I don't know what is the third one they are trying. Many scientists agree, it's an absurd argument. Suddenly now hands cannot become wings. You have seen a wing of a bird? It is so detailed. There is this way, this way, this way, feathers are there. You see a peacock feather, you can see how much details are there. Now suddenly a hand becoming that peacock feather cannot happen in one stage. Therefore they say in between has to come something transitional form. One wing, half wing, something has to come, which are not stable species. But the fact is, to this day, not one transitional form has been found. Darwin at his time did not find, he was the geologist, he did not find a single one. He said, further research is fine. They are saying, we have 150 years, we have dug enough. 250 lakh species we have identified. But we have not find a single transitional species. So I am saying, by intelligence we can understand, actually, if you go in any area. So when I see now so many forms which are existing, my conclusion, inference with the best explanation is, same designer has made it. Because I am seeing there is certain hierarchy in the forms. You see, in the beginning, we made the cycle, then we made the tricycle, then after tricycle, you see there is a small cars over there. You see, there is a hierarchy in designing. Therefore, we know the same body of engineers has been designed or generation after generation they have been developing it. But the same, uh, or like you say the Maruti company, they may have 100 cars. Big companies like Ford, they have 1000 cars. They sell all around the world different models, correct? So thousands of models they have. But the same company is behind it. So similarly, when you see similarity in design, it does not lead to evolution because they are saying, they are saying between chimpanzee and man, there is so much similarity which shows that chimpanzee became man. No, rather it shows me same engineer designed it. And also, they don't know, when we say engineer, it is not God, it is Brahman. Brahman is just another jiva, which is blessed by the Lord with some knowledge how to design all this. True, it says somewhere, the seed of the species was given to Brahma. That means the idea, the whole idea how to design was given by the Lord to Brahma and how to do it. But he is not himself the Lord. So imagine people say God is great. Now understand how great God is. Take another example. We type, we have, we are in mail in Google. Each person gets how much? 10 GB. How many people are having account in Google? Few million now, say 100 million at least. Maybe more, maybe 1 billion. Facebook has 1 billion, maybe 1 billion. So 100 million, some people use other uh, mail. So 100 million into 10 GB is how much? Some uh, lakhs of tetrabytes. That much information Google has to keep somewhere. One hard disk that we have is one tetrabyte. They are also having that only. That means how much hard disk will be there? So millions of hard disks or lakhs of hard disks to keep all the information. Because when you go to internet, it's there. Your mail is there. Krishna has all the information of everything you, whenever you spoke or whatever you do. Can you imagine now how much memory Krishna has? Do you remember what you spoke when you were one year old? Krishna remembers. Whatever you desired at any moment, Krishna remembers. And not only this life, past, present, future, everything. Just imagine the amount of intelligence Krishna has. Therefore, when this intelligence is manifested in the material world, we have Brahma with four heads because Brahma is still a material entity. Four heads he needs because now we say quad processor, quad core, already he has four heads. 
because because materially and the brahmas which are handling bigger universes in we read in the krishna book they have 10000 head they are not developed a processor 10000 processors synchronized together because in a material world when you want to do it you end up in a mess like that just like we are having millions of hard disks to store that information but krishna being completely spiritual correct right? and being the supreme personality uh, he is actually can store all the information just like in bhagavad gita when arjuna krishna tells arjuna uh, that i taught this to sun god correct okay? inum vivasvate yogam proktavan am vai abhayam vivaswan manu ekshvake aprabhi evam parampara praptam evam raja ishe vidu sakale nata yoganasya parantapa i told it to sun god arjuna long time ago so arjuna calculated that comes like 120 million years ago so he asked krishna what are you telling krishna this how millions of hundreds of millions of years ago you are my contemporary so krishna said arjuna there's a difference between you and me you are also there at that time because arjuna is there in every past time in lord chaitanya's past time is came with ramananda rai he is always there with krishna in some capacity sometimes it is we know sometimes we don't know in rama's leela what way he was there maybe he is scrutinizing you study somewhere it is there may not it be but krishna says you are always with me in fact it is said in another purana so we can add up from gita and then add up there he is always with krishna in some capacity because they bhagavad gita krishna says this much that you are also there but you don't remember but i remember so imagine krishna in memory 100 million years ago also what happened he remembers so past present imagine how much memory krishna has how much intelligence krishna has 84 lakh species he designed look at the intelligence today all the scientists together they have unraveled the human genome that took so many years a big team of scientists in fact the scientists led the team after seeing the human genome which was 3.1 billion letter instruction he said this gives me a glimpse of god's mind he it came out from his mouth because he was shocked this gives me a scientist supposed to be an atheist but he said this gives me a glimpse of god's mind because it is amazing how and now even that is so nicely succinctly packed it has so much information so much information this has correct the dna we can see how intelligent programmer krishna is so therefore any line you take you are a doctor you open up the body and you see the design you can feel god is so great so any field of study vedesh sarve aham ev vedya now you open out you will expand more veda means knowledge any field of knowledge you go you will understand krishna is there correct in civil engineering also you can find out <laughs> any field of knowledge actually can lead you to god provided you are a software engineer you see ah what a programming krishna has done this yeah you can appreciate you are a doctor you can appreciate you are a physicist you can appreciate ah because laws are there physics we talk about laws who made the laws who made the laws okay it is not like you know somebody said there was a ocean first from where the ocean came then an accident happened and life came out and by accident nothing happened i have no experience like that anybody has experience by accident cat came out from wood to wood we don't have experience like that how can you speak this is a, this is an unscientific argument by accident uh, life came out matter proper is to always say matter has no creative power a bottle of hydrogen is there a bottle of oxygen is there you see these are all very simple thing proper says but it has deep meanings they will proper says lie there for billions of years like that only you say water was created who makes hydrogen and oxygen we all know this now by science hydrogen mixed with oxygen produces water who did that who did that first thing who created hydrogen who created oxygen god and then who mixed them together who mixed it matter has no creative power suddenly now you have a car or you have a mobile now we have some mobile now single processor is there now recently samsung has brought out quad quad core processor within the mobile s4 is it possible that my mobile if within itself thinks the processor let me become four processors no. engineer can do it but on its own matter cannot evolve itself it has no capacity to do like that take the nf of this uh, analysis now <coughs> now let us come to our subject today our subject here is that the way we use it now if i use this uh, what i want to do actually 
you know, I want to, I want to enjoy with God or I want to enjoy like God. That decision I have to make. We are here in the material world because we wanted to enjoy like God. Krishna is sitting in Vaikuntha and all the servants are bringing. Like in temple, same thing we are learning. Somebody is cooking something and bringing. Somebody is doing chamara. You thought, I also want to enjoy like God. Get up and go to the material world. <laughs> you say, I want to enjoy with God. I want to participate in this enjoyment. Very good. You can go back to the spiritual world. But you want to say, I want to enjoy like God. Go, get out. <laughs> because in the spiritual world, there is only one enjoy. And you cannot be enjoy in a reality. You can only be an enjoyer in illusion. Just like a child says to mother, I want to see moon. What the mother does? She takes a mirror, puts to the moon. We've given this example a thousand times, but it's a very powerful example. In the sense, why illusion was created? Because child wants moon. Correct? Small children, I want moon. They start crying. So what a mother does? Moon cannot be given. No mother has her power. What she will do? She will take a mirror, put it towards her moon. And then what will happen? Reflection. And the child, small child will think he got the moon. So what we have done to the child? We have given him a illusion. So similarly, we have a desire to enjoy like Krishna. You are a jiva. At every moment, you are maintained by the Lord. That's your condition. Huh? We don't know that actually. We are not aware of that. A jiva has no power to handle matter. I have no power to even lift my hand. The Lord does it. Actually, when I am seeing also, the more deeper you go, the, I, the soul does not see. First the Lord sees. When this information goes inside, first the Lord sees. And then, it, because it has to go from material dimension to the spiritual dimension. Soul is not matter. Soul is spirit. How a material image goes to the soul? The Lord gives it. The Lord knows how to give it. But the Lord, first the Lord sees. And then the soul sees. First the Lord hears. Then the soul hears. First the Lord smells. Then the soul smells. That is the Virat Rupa also that is explained like that. First the Lord sees. There is symbolized in the way that unless the sun is there, we can't see. So sun is therefore the eye of the Lord. First the Lord sees. Then you see. Uh, so even in the body, it is scientifically like that. Actually first the Lord is experiencing then we are experiencing. Because actually, they, what the science has done, the mistake, in every field of knowledge they are going, even in biology and medicine, what there are so many theories, so many theories. This way infection happens, this way, and tomorrow another theory comes. Everywhere the mistake that is made, they are removed God. Therefore, they are spinning in confusion. So, very the same scientists can discover God, provided we have the information, but you are not dealing with the showroom scientists. The real scientist. Because Bhagavad Gita, what does Krishna says? Vedesha Sarve, through all the knowledge you will come to me. We have to channel them better. They are going wayward actually. Or in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Vas Veva Sarvamati. Finally, I am everything. Eh? Uh, or another way, Krishna says, Bahunam Jagamanavante, Gyanavan, Maam Prapadyate. So, any line of knowledge you go, finally you will surrender to me. But Prabhupada says, when any, finally you surrender to Krishna, why not surrender now? That information they don't have. Now, they will go on like this for millions of years and then also possible they will not get it. So, therefore, if we can channelize them, we can direct them, we can give the answer to their perplexities, then we can bring them uh, to God. So, our decision should be not to enjoy like God. But to enjoy with God. Huh? With it, not on an equal level, on as a servant. When devotees are participating in Krishna's pleasure, they are enjoying more, not even less. Chaitanya Charita reveals that. He says when Radha Krishna are having Rasa Leela, there are gopis assisting them. And there are sakis which are assisting the gopis. And the pleasure of the sakis is million times more than the previous. The spiritual world is designed like that. When you assist a devotee in his service to Krishna, you enjoy more than the devotee. And not that. Now, in the material world, it is different. Now, uh, you are eating in your uh, plate. You are nicely enjoying some uh, big feast you are eating and you are enjoying. Correct? Somebody is assisting you. You enjoy, he doesn't enjoy anything. Correct? True or not? You have to simply suffer. And he is now eating. A servant is giving. Okay, one more you bring. And he is <laughs> hungry, standing only there. But in the spiritual world, it is different. One thing, spirit has no requirement of food. Has any requirement of food? 
the spiritual world, what they are eating then? What they are eating? Why they are eating? The spiritual world they are eating. Madhu Mangala is eating laddus after laddus. Correct. So what is the eating actually? <laughs> Try to understand. There everything is conscious. Actually they are just like the Surabhi cow is giving milk. They say no. Unlimited milk she gives in the spiritual. And the Kalpaduru Braksha they are giving unlimited fruits. Here a tree, mango to coconut tree will only give coconut. That also falls in your head. It will not give you banana, it will not give you mango. But there, the Kalpaduru Vaksha will give you any fruit you want. You say, give me mango, give me mango. You say, give me grape, no grape. You say, chiku will give you chiku. And all the trees are there in the spiritual world. Prophets are there in Vrindavan also. Therefore, the Goswami is living below a different tree every day. And the tree was supplying all the requirements. But it is higher plane. We are not in that plane. Goswami is living below one tree every day. And the tree was supplying all the requirements. You want milk, uh, some tree, uh, fruit, that is also ready. So in the spiritual world, anyway the tree is Kalpataru, Chintamani, that kind of jewel is also there. Anything you want will become gold. And the milk is also unlimited. True. So the question is, why do you need it? Because there everything is conscious. In Brahma Swami that I said, I have told previously, you drink the milk of Surabhi there, a love of Krishna, and another way touches your heart. Just like when you have jokes, one pleasure. So therefore, the pleasure, the humor of Krishna consciousness touches you in different, you drink that humor in the spiritual world. When you're eating, because you have experienced the spiritual world, we relate to the same thing here. We have the same expectancy. That's why when somebody's body get cut, I told you, you get shocked. Spiritual world, body does not get cut. Therefore, you get a shock. We are used to the spiritual world, not this world. We are traveling somewhere. We have a great anticipation of an explosion of consciousness. I am going there. That's why the people have the expectancy. I am going somewhere. Why? Because the spiritual world, you go to meet the Lord. It's a great pleasure. It's a great occasion. I am going to see a movie. Great, you know, anticipation is there. In the material world, only anticipation exists. But why anticipation exists? Why that? Because the experience is there of the spiritual world. When you eat something, you always have that. It will change your consciousness. Correct? You have that. Always have that. I go to eat. It changes the consciousness. In the spiritual world, eat that is conscious. Food is not dead. It is fully conscious. Here also it carries consciousness. We say that. Correct? Food is fully conscious. The problem used to eat. It used to take 45 minutes. One thing he used to eat like Ayurveda. How many times? 12 times you have to know. They say like that. You have to chew so many times. And because any person who is fully conscious, he enjoys every moment. But not materially, he is enjoying the love of Krishna in that food. Because food no longer remains gross. When you offer to the Lord, it becomes like a food of the spiritual world. If we have the conscious, and therefore some people are given the experience, what experience they are given? Amazing. That once what happened, Srila Prabhupada offered to his, hey, you can transfer and give you what happened in the once Prabhupada Guru's disappearance day was there, appearance of disappearance day. Prabhupada personally cooked khichdi, some small offering for his spiritual master. And he offered to his spiritual master. The devotee ate that, that is there, if you read Prabhupada memories, it is there. They said, when he took one grain in the mouth, he was stunned. Explosion of consciousness, of love of Krishna. So, he said, we took every grain and looking at each other, we cannot believe what consciousness we have been thrown by Prabhupada. We got a taste of the consciousness is living in, correct? Because food carries the consciousness of the cook. So similarly, when we eat food, all of us have a great anticipation of change of consciousness. We have that. I am going to eat food. It's a great event that is going to happen, correct? And we feel it will change my consciousness. In the spiritual world, yes it is. The food is flowing with love of Krishna. When you eat food, you are love of Krishna. In the material world, it's dead. Therefore, you eat and then finally eat it. No use. But actually, the anticipation is like that. You travel somewhere as if some great thing is going to happen. Why? Because the spiritual world, you travel to see another Utsava. The spiritual world is called what? Nitya Utsava. Every day there is a festival. Correct? So people say, I went there. That is something happened. And we know nothing happened, same boring thing. 
But actually in the spiritual world, every event is full of pleasure. Okay, so in that way we can understand some things here. So we have an opportunity. Prabhupada said we are the servant of the circumstances. We keep meditating. Huh? Because these are not, these are our, what I say, they are realized words. We are all servant of circumstances. Keep thinking about that. I am servant of circumstances. So if I am in proper association and I take to Krishna's service, correct? Prabhupada says, here he is saying, when a devotee understands in good association that actually he will be happy in service to Krishna and he engages in devotee, that is called Shraddha. That is just the beginning of spiritual life. Shraddha, Shabde, Vishwasha, Kridal, Nishaya, Krishna, Bhakti, Kaira, Sarva, Karma, Krita, Haya. If I serve Krishna, my life will be successful. This is the beginning, not the end of spiritual life. When you begin with this faith and you start offering devotion service, correct? What happens to you? You become seen by the Lord. You become noticed by the Lord. One level of mercy Krishna is always having, maintaining. That's not a big deal. But you are not ready for voluntary, because when you are trying to understand the truth, in science is a dead matter. In spirituality is a person. Therefore, our process is different. To understand some truth, just like you don't know some exam is over, you score less marks, we can sit in the book for 10 days and capture that understanding. Correct? But you cannot capture God. He is a person. He refuses to be captured by anybody. He will be captured when he is pleased with our service. Huh? He is a personality. He will not be adhokshale, beyond your perception. But he will reveal himself to you. So Prabhupada is saying here, when you offer devotion service to the Lord, because maintenance he is doing, just like say, take an example, uh, there are some you know, children who are all rebelled against the father. The father will still maintain the children. That much any father does. There are some instances where the children leave the house and they run away. True? Still the parents maintain the child. There are many times, they are in colleges studying, they are full first class rebels. And father is very annoyed, sometimes they reveal. But they still happily they maintain the child. So Krishna's maintenance is going on in the same way. Because a drop of water, we can know about the ocean. We are a soul, so we can know Krishna's behavior. Correct? If we see a property in water, we can know it exists in the ocean also. So when a small father, mother of this world is happily maintaining the child, even though he may not be very pleased with the relationship, it's not a big deal. Krishna is also doing that. True. Understand something more. Now the same child, if suppose he starts behaving in a very pleasing way to the parents, it will be a surprise for the parents, correct? The so same way Krishna is also waiting for that. Surprise, he is waiting for the surprise. But, in the, but when, when we start in a loving devotional service, we start behaving to the Supreme Father, Krishna, what happens? We become seen by the Lord with happiness. Prabhupada says, sometimes people say, everything God sanction, correct? But there are certain things Krishna sanctions happily, certain things he sanctions with a sad heart. But without Krishna's sanction, nothing can happen. Correct? Suppose you say you want to murder somebody. Take it. And you say you want to eat gulab jamun. Now Krishna will be very happy to sanction that eating gulab jamun because it is good for your health. But if murdering somebody, Krishna is not happy. But in insisting, I will do it, I will do it. Okay, do, do. Because without Krishna's sanction, nothing can happen. And that person also has to have some crazy karma to go through that experiential learning so that it is combined. So in that way, if you go deeper, so if you become seen by Krishna, that is the challenge of life. You cannot understand Krishna. Now scientifically we can go to some level. Now come to spiritual domain. To be noticed by Krishna is the challenge. Prabhupada said, no, don't try to see Krishna. Do something that Krishna will see. What does it mean? To become noticed. Oh. So, ordinary maintenance is going on. To become noticed by Krishna is something what a devotee only has a privilege. Huh? Devotee means a real devotee. You are not devotee because you have not been noticed by Krishna. Because once we are noticed by Krishna, that is said in the nectar of devotion, the first symptom of somebody who begins devotion service is freedom from all anxiety, freedom from harassment of the senses. That is the first dose of mercy of Krishna, which you have not received. That means you have not been even noticed by Krishna. Because one, this mercy Krishna is anyway giving, maintaining. There is no big deal. Sometimes, yeah, I got job. So God is very merciful to me. And that mercy he has given to dog also. He is maintaining the dog also. He is maintaining the process to maintain. It's not a big deal. The big deal is when, when Krishna notices you 
absorbs you from all the reactions to sinful activities. When he gives you love of Krishna, that is the noticing by Krishna. That is a very big thing being getting love of Krishna. But at least being freed from the harassment of the senses. At least being able to understand, I am a servant of Krishna. I have no other identity. Correct? So this is the beginning. Installed of mercy starts from, you know, not thap. One stage it is thrown on a person. Gradually the mercy of Krishna starts off. Provided he become seen by Krishna. So this should be our attempt here to become noticed and seen by Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, 